The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of Around the OAA. Um, also, I'm um, one of the hosts of Between Terminas and Last Three Brain Cells on Orange Television. I'd like to welcome those hearing us on a local voice on SoundCloud um, and also watching us on Orange Television as well. Um, we got a lot to talk about this week, obviously. Um, my coach, Ian Locke, I'm not here this week. Um, you know, I'm on assignment. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things that are going around. Um, we have basketball recaps and um, we have girls' basketball recaps from districts and also. Um, Boys basketball um, scores also on our sports ticker as well, so that's something to really, really um, look at. We have those on our on our on our um, on our on our stat tracker on our stat tracker. Um, I mean, like we're gonna go down into um, we're gonna break these districts down and um, see where everybody's at. I mean, obviously, there are five teams that are left around the OA, um, and that's a pretty good number when you look at West Bloomfield, Troy, Berkeley. Clarkston, Lake Orion are all still in the postseason. Um, obviously, you know, um, so we're gonna recap each of these um districts and also preview the regional um going forward. Um I think when you look at the week that was surrounding girls basketball, um you gotta really look at it from, you know, there were some shockers, there were some I mean, there were some surprises that nobody expected. Um, also there was some, you know, there was some that were expected. I mean, obviously when you look at the district over at Waterford Kettering, um, you knew nobody wasn't going to touch Clarkston. I mean, obviously when you look at like what Maddie Sarovsky's done, um, she had 20 points against, um, Waterford Mott and then 38 against Waterford Kettering, um, in the district final. I mean, that says, you know, a lot where that, where Clarkson was at. I mean, like, um, so I, I don't know how tested Clarkson's going to be hanging the regional final matchup. Um, so that's something to really keep a close eye on there. Um, but, you know, congrats to Clarkson on their um, regional um, um, final, regional semifinal appearance, uh, winning a district championship. I think that's the second straight year. No, the third straight year, um, Clarkson is advancing to this round. So, a lot of good things going on over there for Coach Good now in that program over there. Um, the biggest shocking district for me had to be over at Detroit Renaissance. And when you look at a district where Detroit Renaissance was favored, they had they have some talent back, they have experience back. Um, they are at home on their home floor. Um, you went to the state final last season and you play a team in Berkeley who I thought was coming into the district playing with nothing to lose, um, and everything to gain. And Berkeley really, really took advantage of, you know, you know, some mistakes that Detroit Renaissance made and not only just went into the district final and they pulled out probably one of the most biggest stunners in the state by stunning Detroit Renaissance um, fit by 20, 51 to 31. I'm going, I'm looking at the score and I'm saying to myself, what? So I'm going on Twitter on Friday night and I'm looking at Berkeley, you know, Berkeley girls basketball's Twitter page saying they're district champions. I'm going like, seriously, this can't be real. I mean, like, Berkeley beat Detroit Renaissance? I'm going, like, Detroit Renaissance, they're, they got a well-oiled machine down there, coached by Shane Law, and Berkeley, you know, beat them by 20? I'm going, like, what? This can't be right. So I did some, so I talked to some of my um, Berkeley spies, and they, and they told me it was confirmed. 51-31. I'm going like, wow. I was just, my reaction, you look at my eyes right now. That's how I was. I was absolutely stunned. Um, then I'm thinking to myself, how in the heck did Berkeley beat Detroit Renaissance considering Detroit Renaissance had to play 
played a tough schedule. They played in showcase games. They played in, I mean, like, they played in so many different environments. But when my source answered me back, they had trouble with the 2-3 zone. And I'm going, like, really? You know, a 2-3 zone traditionally slows teams down, and it does. I know a lot of girls' basketball programs do play this type of defense. But, you know, I know Coach Cody Feltner, when he came over from Ferndale University, um, he um, installed a, t a very good athletic 2-3 zone. Kind of reminds me of Jim Behines when he was at Syracuse. Um, also, Mike Griffin, 2-3 um, zone. Of course, he's, a, he's another 2-3 zone master around the, um, around the um, area here. Of course, he coaches at Rochester Luthor Northwest's boys basketball team. Um, so the two three zone really it's a really interesting off defense. I mean, like you know, basically, you know, it's like you know, if you've seen basketball, a lot of these teams do it. I mean, Syracuse, perfect example, they do it. Um, I think that most teams that in the Detroit Public School League they do not run a two three zone, and this is what. I think, you know, when you look at the game against Royal Oak, um, Renaissance game against Royal Oak, I mean, like, in the, in the, in the district semifinal, that was 34-20. And I'm looking at that score, I'm saying to myself, wow, Detroit Renaissance usually is a team that scores above 50. I mean, upper 40s, low 50s, um, you know, like to run and gun it, go up and down the floor. Um, the 2-3 zone usually takes away that team's ability to go up and down the floor. And, you know, and Berkeley did a pretty good job against Detroit Renaissance, taking away their um, ability to go up and down the floor. And, you know, and I asked myself this, I mean, like, you know, I, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I'm, I'm still completely stunned that Detroit Renaissance would lose by 20 to Berkeley on their home floor. That's stunning to me. Um... Now, they got 22 points from Ashley Loon. Um, I thought Maya Jones and, Jill and Jillian Gomes played really well defensively. Sammy Withrow also. Um, Ava Beard. Um, it was a total team effort for Coach Cody Faulkner in this program. It was a total team effort. I mean, you got to give those kids a lot of credit. But I also think what also helped Berkeley was that district semifinal game against Detroit Mumford, where... They ended up winning that one 53-47. It was a really good game. Um, Loon, Loon was Loon. Um, I mean, like, Berkeley played really well in that game. Um, big win for them at that time. Um, but I think the one that really is the shocker for me was the Detroit Renaissance one. And, you know, I just didn't expect. I still am at lost words thinking about that game. I mean... And it's not on Berkeley's part because I knew Berkeley had a good chance, had an outside chance at that game. But I'm just shocked how they shut down Detroit Renaissance vaulted offense with the 2 3 zone. And, you know, and that says a lot to where the program's been. Obviously, Cody Feltner coming in there, taking over. Um, I think also helping being in the white really helped Berkeley as well in this one, playing the likes of Rochester, Lake Orion, and Oxford. Um, those are um, teams that are really well-rounded teams. Um, you know, I I think that, um, you know, when you look at playing those type of teams um, in that division, I mean, Troy Athens, North Farmington are also well-coached teams as well. Um, so is Adams. Um, playing those type of teams, and even Blue Bay Hills. I mean, like playing those type of teams really helped, um, really helped um, Berkeley get to, um, get, I think, get that win against Detroit Renaissance. But also, you got to give credit to players as well. I mean, you know, and then, of course, seeing the um, photo that Coach um, Feltner um, had with the district championship, um, taking a um, car seat ride to Berkeley, um, that tells you everything. And the fact I was also surprised that um that Berkeley let um that Detroit Renaissance let Berkeley cut down their own nets. I mean, like I mean, like I'm a little I'm surprised by that. I'm really am to be honest with you. I'm really, really surprised, you know, that they would let Berkeley cut down the nets on their um on their home floor. So, you know, a lot of things 
in that one. But to me, that was the biggest surprise was District 26 over at Detroit Renaissance. Um, the Phoenix basically going down on their home floor to Berkeley by 20. Um, huge win for the Bears. I mean, like, but I just did not expect um, Detroit Renaissance to score 31 points and basically just get just get blown out by 20 points to um, Berkeley. I mean, my goodness. I mean, I did not expect that one coming. I mean, nobody did. I mean, and when I looked at Jerry Purcell's projections, he predicted um, Detroit um, Renaissance would cruise in that district. I mean, I, and I'll, I'll admit this myself. I mean, like, I thought Berkeley would lose in the district final of the Detroit Renaissance. I really did last week. I mean, I thought, you know, it just really, I didn't know how they would match up with Renaissance. I didn't know how they would match up, but they did. They found a way to win that game. Um, now they're moving on to the regional final, regional semifinals. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Berkeley going forward there. But that district over there, District 26 um, at Detroit Renaissance, um, big time shock, especially considering Detroit Renaissance plays in a lot of showcase games. They play in a lot of, they get a lot of exposure. Um, uh, they got a well-known coach in Shane Laval. I mean, like, Jet, and they were state finalists last year. So just to see Berkeley, you know, um, just to see them win that, I mean, like, was absolutely stunning and rewarding at the same time. So that's something to really, really be proud of. Um, another district that I was really, you know, that didn't surprise me, but I know it surprised some people around the state was over at Troy, um, with, um, Warren Cousineau and Troy in the district final, um, Troy, of course, winning that one forty thirty seven on a buzzer beater by Alyssa Mantuza with about five seconds to go in the game. Um, you know, I, I watched that play so many times, um, you know, and it was really well designed um, by Coach Julius Porter. Um, well designed, um, getting the ball side to side, um, getting it for an open three by Mantuza, and then you see the Troy student section go nuts. I mean, you know, and they, I mean, like Warren Cousino gets a timeout, and then like um, was about three seconds ago, and then um, they try going down the field, miss the three, um, and Troy wins the district title. Um, for me, I think it's is satisfying for Troy because obviously when you look at the, um, when you look at Troy, you know, historically this is a team that had, had not gotten out of the first first game. I mean, the last two years they lost to Utica and then last year they lost to Rochester in the district semifinals. Um, when you really look at, um, when you really look at Troy, I mean, obviously you got to, it starts with the big three. I mean, technically, if you count, I mean, like, um, Mia Val Otis and, um, Elena Zessis, you know, that's five, you know what I mean? But it really starts with the big three. When you look at Charlotte Sabaka, Kendall Zider, and, um, and of course, Alyssa Mantuza. Now, Mantuza came back from an ACL injury. She tore the ACL in the summer, but rehabbed hard, came back. I mean, like, and look what she's been doing lately. I mean, she's been playing really well. And you look at the stats that Troy's been, Troy's been a much different animal with her back in the lineup. And that says a lot um, to where that they have been. I mean, obviously early on in the year, they were struggling, um, not getting used to life in the red. I mean, like, but they've got, I mean, they got better. They improved real quick. I mean, Mantuza came back. That's a big deal there um, for Troy. So, when you really look at the Colts, um, they've also gotten other other players contributing as well. Lizzie Budnick is another one that's done really well for Troy. Um, you know, I think she's been playing really well. Um, obviously, you know, you got Reagan Zider there as well. Um, so when you look at what Coach Julius Porter has, I mean, like, you know, obviously having those three players back, especially man to the back, is really really critical. For this team, for that, for that, um, for that team, especially in the game against Warren Cousineau, where they really had their struggles, um, early on. I mean, when I looked at that game, um, you know, Warren Cousineau was up seven at one point, and then they were up five at the end of three against against Troy. So, the credit to the Colts for handling, um, 
for um shutting down the um Patriots down to I think they had two points in that um whole in that fourth quarter. I mean like but I knew it was gonna be a um a battle down the stretch and Troy found a way to win on their home floor. Um they really found a way in that game. I mean like and a lot of that I know and I know Alyssa Man to the story. Um she missed the winning three point attempt against Rochester last year, but then of course hitting the winning three here. Um just seeing um just seeing the student section at Troy, the bench, um, the the um the ladies go nuts. I mean like that says a lot there. Um when you look at Troy. Um now with Troy obviously they got by they got past Troy Athens. Um of course that was a matchup where um they lost to the Red Hawks earlier in the year in the district semifinals. Um and then they got them back in a big way um to win that one. Um, so when you really look at, and then of course the Warren Cousinal game, I mean, yes, the Patriots, they did win the Mac blue. I mean, like, um, you know, they were, they were coming in at 15 and six. Um, but I just felt like in that game, you know, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, like, I know the pundits picked Warren Cousinal to win that district. I really thought Troy had a great shot if, um, things went right and, you know, they did, on their on their part, I mean, obviously, when you look at what Troy did, um, you know, the play of Kendall Zider, the play of Charlotte Sabalka, the play of Alyssa Mantuza, Lizzie Budnick was been huge for them this whole postseason in the in, in the district tournament. I mean, that really says a lot, and it's also Troy's first district title since two thousand one. So it's been a long while since the um, Colts won a district title, and for Troy, you know, this says a lot to where they had been. I mean, like where they have been, you know, you know, especially, you know, when you look at when you look at it now for Troy, you know what I mean? I mean, it's it's a, I mean, like it's it's a great feeling for the Colts, especially for Coach Julius Porter. Um, who came in there last year, um, you know, took over the program. Um, there were some concerns. There still is with program strength, but. But for right now, Troy's in a really nice spot right now. They really are. Um, so that's something to really, really look at. Um, let's go now from the um, Troy District to the Lake Orion District. Um, this one was pretty much was really insane. Um, I said last week on the podcast that um, with Ian and uh, myself, we said three teams had a great chance to win the district. And, you know, it was, it was Rochester, Stony Creek, and Lake Orion. Um, those were the three teams that I thought had a great chance to win the district. Um, Rochester had the, um, I thought had the easiest draw, um, taking on a very tough Edith Eisenhower team. Um, and then Stony Creek, who was also seeded, had to go through Lake Orion. And, you know, when you look at that, when you look at um, the Dragons, um, and the Dragons, we knew a couple weeks ago, they had that final week where they were just mentally spent. Um, they changed, they changed everything around. They turned, they ha- it was all mentally for this group. You know, they turned it around, knocked off Adams um, pretty convincingly. And then they beat Stony Creek in a hard fought game. It, that game kind of felt like it was a district final between Lake Wayne and Stony Creek. I mean, the lead went back and forth. Um, you had key players making big shots. Um, Kylie Heck had a big shot. I know, um, I mean, like Sarah LaPrairie hit a big three as well um, during that game, but Lake Orion defended just enough, and it was a good win for, it was a huge win for Coach Bob Bridges at the time, um, you know, knocking off a perennial OA Red Power in Stony Creek, um, and then getting the district final. Um, basically, when you look at them, that game, um, r- taking on a Rochester team that beat it twice, and you know, both by over 20 points. I mean, like um, 20 points and 17, respectively. But Lake Orion found a way and and played, slowed the game down, played team defense, um, and stunned Rochester 40-34, earning them a, um, their first district title since 2010. And that says a lot, especially to where that team was at all season long, especially when you look at, the emotional aspect that Lake Orion went through. I mean, like everything that this program's went through. I mean, 
you know, they weathered the storm and they lost the league title on their final week of the regular season only to win the league, the district title. Um, that says a lot when you look at this Dragon team. Um, and this is a very young team. I mean, Lake Orion, they got a lot coming back next year when you look at players like Maddie Ebert, Chloe Wiegers, Kylie Heck, um, Audrey Wishmeyer, um, very good sophomore, promising sophomores in Brian Palazek and Lexi Strohshine. You also got Jody McCaffrey coming back as well. I mean, like, Lake Orion's a team that, you know, this is a team early in the year was playing loose, competent, and when you play loose basketball, that's going to develop competence, and they were doing that early on. Then they had that bump in the month of February, you know, and then um, and then when they got in the postseason, they put it all together, and Lake Orion found a way, you know, to win that district. It was a very difficult district. Obviously, when you look at teams like Stony Creek and Rochester that were in there, Utica Eisenhower, I was really impressed with as well. I mean, I thought Utica Eisenhower, um, they gave Rochester everything they could for about a half um, in that game, but actually three about three and a half quarters, but at the end of the day, it was Rochester who pulled away late. Um, Rochester is another young team next year. I mean, like, they're going to be very good. They got a lot back. I mean, they lose two seniors. I mean, like, um, but the majority of their starting lineup comes back. Um, so I'll be curious to see what Coach Bill Thurston has um, next year, especially when you look at having those two towers in the uh, middle and um, Kylie Robinson and Alice Mack. Um, those, that's going to be a huge, um, huge, huge addition next year um, for Rochester going forward there. Um, and then you look at West, the West Bloomfield District. Obviously, that was the district that was deemed the kiss of death district. Um, Groves um, beat Seaholm 45-41, a really good game there. Um, followed by, um, and then, of course, you had um, Bloomfield Hills and North Farmington. That one went close to the wire again. Um, North Farmington did win that game. Um, I'll tell you what. I mean, Bloomfield Hills is going to be a very scary team next year. They're going to be very scary. The majority of their team's back. You have a, you have re, you have three very good players coming back for Coach Chris and Massey. Um, I I like the foundation that Blue Bay Hills has put in there. She's built three programs. You've got program strength on your side. Um, I think Blue Bay Hills is a team to really watch next year. I really do. I mean, I don't know what division they're going to be in. Um, but when you really look at um. If they're going to be in the white, if they're going to be in the blue, I mean, like, I really think Bloomfield Hills is a team to really, really watch um, going forward. I mean, they got a nice blend of bat. They got a good brand of basketball. I mean, I really like the brand that they w- that they have. Um, the youth on that team, they're going to get better and better. Um, when you look at a team like um, Bloomfield Hills. Um, and then you look at on the other side, you got Seaholm. Seaholm, of course, winning the blue this year. Um, I really, really like what Seaholm's got next year. This is going to be a very good basketball team next season. Of course, Chris Manchester has done a really nice job building that program. Um, you got talent there. Maggie Lieber's one I really like. Um, Shea Manchester's another one. I mean, when you look at Bloomfield Hills, I mean, when you look at Seaholm, I mean, this is a team that I really think could be a very dangerous team no matter what division you put them in next year. Um, it's going to be something to really, really watch. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see how the Maples do next season under Coach Manchester. So that's something to really watch there. Um, Groves, um, you know, um, for Groves, even though they ran into a very good um, West Bloomfield team, um, but... They got the majority of their pl- team coming back. I mean, they do lose one senior in Destin McCurdy. Um, but Caitlin Sanders is going to be one to really watch for next year. I really think Caitlin Sanders, I think, is going to be in line for a breakout year next year. I really am high on this young lady. I mean, and that team over at Groves. I mean, it was a transition year for Coach Allison Heidi in that team. Um, they had their ups and downs. Um, I, I just didn't, I'll admit, I'll admit, I didn't know if the red, if Groves was ready to be in that division in the red. Um, I still don't know, but, but I think Groves next year will be better. Um, 
And I think a lot of that's going to be because of Caitlin Sanders, but they got others as well um, to really watch for. Um, Groves is a team that I think is on the way up. I really do think that they are. I mean, like, so that's, that's going to be a team I'm really keeping an eye on heading into next year as well. So that's my take on Groves. And then you have North Farmington. Obviously, they lost to Birmingham Marion. They had the majority of their team coming back. I'm um, still so Leffler, Penelope Query, Eliza Miller. Um, you have them, um, Aliyah Jihad. Um, you know, Coach Jeff Simpson's got a lot coming back, um, you know, next year. And I think, you know, when you look at North Farmington, people are going to say, well, where's this team going to be at? I mean, there's still some questions, though, that I have with the Raiders going forward, but it's something to really keep an eye on there. Um, and then you look at, the district final between West Bloomfield and Birmingham Marion. Um, West Bloomfield won that one, 46-35. Um, it was Mary Cicerone, head coach at Birmingham Marion's um, final game as coaching the Mustangs. Um, when you really look at what she's done over there at Birmingham Marion, she is a legend over there. She won state titles. She's won numerous Catholic League championships. Um, you know, and, and she, her, her career is very legendary. It, that's the bottom line. I mean, you look at that team. I mean, Birmingham Mary next year, I don't know who's going to coach that program, who's going to be Cicerone's replacement. But I think when you look at Birmingham Mary is Birmingham Mary. I mean, they're going to be very good. I mean, they, they got some very good players coming back. You got Sarah Sylvester coming back. You got Mackenzie Swanson. I mean, like, they've got, a, they got, a, they got, some, they got some talent coming back. I mean... So that's something to really look look at with Birmingham Marion is, you know, what they've got coming back. I mean, but in that game, West Bloomfield, you know, Birmingham Marion tried to slow the game down, um, you know, basically, um, you know, but West Bloomfield, they found, I mean, they found a way. I mean, obviously, when you have players like Mayana Hooper, both Davis sisters, Summer in India, and then you have um, both Hendrick sisters, um, Cindy and um, Kendall. I mean, you know that you're going to get, you're going to get, I mean, like, and I know, and a lot of people say West Bloomfield is the most deepest team in the entire state. You know, I think that's, that's true. You know what I mean? I really think that's a true statement there. But like I said, I mean, I was really, I'll admit, I was really concerned about their depth and I still am going forward when you look at West Bloomfield. Um, I still am. And I'm being really honest with Coach Jerry McAllister's team. Um, just worried about their depths. Um, now, I think they have the talent to make a state final run. That's for sure. But they, and they're on a mission right now, and I, and I know they are. I mean, they're on a mission. Um, obviously, when you look at when your teams, when teams are on a mission, it's hard to stop them. So, you know, so when I look at West Bluefield, I mean, like, that is a team that looks to be on a mission. They are a dangerous team. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at West Bluefield, I mean, like, they can make some noise, some serious, serious noise going forward. Um, the other districts to recap, obviously, um, Harper Woods losing in the district final, St. Clair Shore, South Lake. Um, it was a tough way for them to lose that one um, on their home floor. Um, they do have a lot coming back. I know Coach Paul Allen's got a lot of talent coming back. Um, so that's something to really keep an eye on heading into next year. Um, Ferndale University, um, you know, um, losing the district final to Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, they got by Ferndale. Um, that's something to really keep an eye on going forward there. Um, you know, when you look at those districts there. Um, and then you got the, um, the Grand Blank District over, uh, another Davidson District over up at, um, in Genesee County. That's where Oxford was at. They ended up losing, um, by, um, they ended up losing, um, 59-27, the district semifinal of Grand Blank. Um, I really felt like the NPR really got the Wildcats here because Oxford really got hot late at the end of the year. But when you look at the NPR, the ma the district matchups, they were announced the week before, you know, and that ended up hurting Oxford because Oxford ended up being the B team um, and having to play Grand Blank, um, who was the top seed in the district and um it was really unfortunate for the Wildcats to get that matchup because of um because of um how the seeding took place. So 
I know Ian and I were both very upset with Oxford um seed, you know, in the tournament, but um, you know, it doesn't take away, you know what I mean, what they've went through this season and also what um, you know, in the season they that they've had. They had a really good year. I mean, they do lose Kayla Casper, that's gonna be a huge loss for them. But you do return some very key players in Miranda Winemco. You look at um Peyton Richter coming back from injury. You have Allison Hustler, Nevada Wood, um, Sophia Robb. Um, you know, that freshman class at Oxford was really, really good. I mean, like, and that's not counting their rest of the program. Their program is very solid. Um, so Coach Rachel Breyer's got a lot to be proud of coming back um, going forward there when you look at the um, Wildcats hanging the next year. Um, what's the preview of the regional now? Obviously, of course, the regionals are coming up for girls basketball. Of course, um, the boys basketball, um, we're going to preview that also this week as well. So, But looking at the regionals, obviously you got a regional at West Bloomfield where you have two teams are there, two teams are at Fenton, and then, of course, the other team um, there is going to be at Troy Athens, and that's Troy. Um, so we'll talk about those regionals, previewing those three regionals. Um, let's go to the, um, West Bloomfield Regional first. I mean, West Bloomfield earns a nut, earns another two games at home. Um, most likely two games at home, um, on the blacktop. They get to play, um, Farmington Hills Mercy first. Um, and then on the other side, you have Berkeley taking on Growth Point North. So we're going to look at West Bloomfield's matchup first with, um, with, um, Farmington Hills Mercy, of course, um. Brown Hills Mercy is a pretty good team. I mean, Maya White's a very good player for Coach Gary Morris. Um, they got a good enough, they got a good team. Um, when you look at the district that Farm Hills Mercy was in, um, obviously, you know, with Farmington was in there. I thought Farmington should have been in the um district in the district final, had not been for a tough overtime loss to um, you know, to a um Laboni Stevenson. And um, you know, of course, Farmington and of course they had a, I mean, like, obviously, Autumn Barrett had a really nice career over there at Farmington this year. Um, but when you look at this matchup here for West Bluefield, um, I, I just don't know if I see any problems for West Bluefield against the Marlins because of the fact that they, I thought Birmingham Marion was a better team than Farmington's Mercy, despite that they've had their battles in the Catholic League. Um but when I look at this matchup here, I just think being at home is going to be really interesting. Um, also being, um, you know, the, the surroundings, I think, are going to be very nice for Berkeley. I, I don't know, for West Bluefield, I think that that's going to be, I think that's something to really look at. I mean, like, obviously, I mean, like, the question for me is, does Farm Sales Mercy have the depth to match up against the, um, against the um, Davis sisters, the Hendricks sisters, and Mayanna Hooper? That's the big question. I mean, West Bloomfield's got a lot more athleticism. I mean, like, there's a lot more talent on the floor, and it's at home. So that's something to really keep an eye on in that regional semifinal matchup with Farm Hills Mercy is does, you know, does the Marlins, you know, can they match up with West Bloomfield? And can West Bloomfield play another style of tempo, you know, like they did against Birmingham Murray, and, of course, they played slow down tempo. Um, I think that's, I'm curious to see what happens in that matchup. On the other side, you have Berkeley taking on Gross Point North. And this one's a very interesting one. Gross Point North was ranked ninth in the state until Stony Creek beat them. Um, and Stony Creek, we knew was a, we know, was a very good basketball team. Uh, very good team. Gross Point North has two very good players. Um, one, is in, one is Natalie Babcock. Um, of course, Babcock did not play in their, um, district final win the other night, but she's a very talented player. And the other one is Annabelle Ariant, which of course, if you know the Ariant family, um, Julia Ariant, of course, plays the Empower Four position at Michigan State, but she also was a Gross Point North, um, standout as well. So when you really look at this matchup between Berkeley, Berkeley's basically playing with house money. They really are, especially with how what they've been through. This is the t this is the team that a lot of people say are not supposed to be here. Is Berkeley? 
you know, especially what they did against Detroit Renaissance, um, knocked off Detroit Mumford, basically going through the Detroit Public School League. I mean, like, and we talked about this earlier with Berkeley, is when you're a team that plays with house money, you're very dangerous. So I'm very curious to see how Growth Point North matches up against Berkeley's 2-3 zone. And I'm also curious how their staff is going to handle a game plan against Ashley Loon. I mean, you look at what Ashley Loon has proven in this postseason. She has proven to be one of the most underrated players in the state of Michigan. I mean, her play, her talent, I mean, very underrated, to say the least. That whole Berkeley Bears team is very underrated. So when you really look at the Bears, um, obviously, um, playing with house money, going against Gross Point North. Um, Gross Point North, we know, has been a proven power in the MAC. Um, in the MAC, um, I think they're in the MAC Red. Um, but when you really look at, um, when you really look at um, this matchup here, it looks this this looks like a complete mismatch on paper. It really does. I mean. You look at the talent growth point north as you look at obviously Berkeley, you know, not being here, you know what I mean? Not not supposed to be here. Um, but I'll tell you what, I mean, I think Berkeley's got a chance in this one. I really do. Because there's several factors. Two three zone. Also, I think the play of Ashley Loon, you know, but also watch out for um for if Berkeley can stay disciplined in this game. I think they got a great chance because if, I mean, because there's times that Berkeley's physicality and discipline can come back and haunt them. And it has in the past in league play, especially, but it didn't against Detroit Renaissance. Um, but I'm curious to see what type of game plan coach Cody Butler is going to have against Gross Point North. Um, you know, obviously with, with the Norsemen, um, you know, they're very talented, very, very well coached as well. Um, but as a regional as a whole, uh, so that's, I'm very curious to see what happens there. As a regional as a whole, um, I just think that West Bluefield, there's, it's just too much West Bluefield because I think the Lakers are, they're, the Lakers are at home. They're talented enough to do pretty well. Um, I think they're going to, I think the, they should win this regional. They should win the regional. I know Mercy will give him some fits, um, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if Berkeley upset Growth Point North. It really wouldn't surprise me if they did. Or are they West Bloomfield material? Probably not, but but um, I just think when you look at this regional here, I just don't think anybody's touching West Bloomfield. So, so we'll see what happens there in that regional there. Um, let's go from that regional to the one at Troy. Uh, at Troy Athens, um, Troy's taking on um, St. Clair Shores Lakeview, and then on the other side you have Utica taking on um, Macomb Lutheran North. Um, with that Utica Macomb Lutheran North matchup here, I'm curious to see the matchup um, between um, Lena Ray and um, curious to see the match between Lena Ray and um, and um, Brooke Daniels. That's going to be a really interesting star matchup there between those two those two players there um i think macomb lance cruz north has a lot more better teams surrounding them um but it will be very interesting to see what game plan utica does in that game um against um macomb lance cruz north i mean like that they, they're a very the, the lancers are a really good team the crusaders are a very good team they are a very very good team um, and then on the other side here, um, we're going to break this one down more. Um, I talked to Ian Locke, my co-host, um, prior to talking about this matchup here with them, with the Huskies. The Huskies are having a nice year this year. They are having a really good year this year. Um, I'm curious to see how the Colts will match up to them. I think Troy matches up extremely well with St. Clair Shores Lakeview. I think that they match up extremely well. You got Kendall Zider, you got Charlotte Saboka, you have Alyssa Mantuza. I mean, you look at those three. That says a lot for you. But Troy has not been here. Lakeview, on the other hand, has. 
But what ha- what what works in Troy's favor is the fact that they have it's basically not that far from Troy High School, which is at Troy Athens. The regionals at Troy Athens. So you really think about this, you know, home court could favor Troy in this one. It could. But, you know, it's going to be, I'm curious to see how Troy does. They're a much different team now. I mean, now that, you know, that they're whole. I think when you look at this region as a whole, don't be surprised if Troy beats St. Clair Shores Lakeview and gets the regional final to take on Macomb Lanch Cruz North. It's going to be a heck of a game between those two teams. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Troy wins this region. It really wouldn't. But, you know, Macomb Lance Cruz North has a very strong say. They're very good. Brooke Daniels is a very good player. So when you really look at this regional, I think Troy, I think Troy will have their hands full in both games. I really do think it's going to be the case. So we'll see what happens there in that matchup. And then the third and final regional that involves OA teams is at um, is at Fenton. You got Clarkson Lake Orion, and then you have um, on the other side you have Lakeland taking on Heartland. Um, when you look at Lakeland Heartland, obviously you got Grace Good now on Lakeland. Um, Lakeland won a district that I really wasn't impressed with. Um, Heartland had to knock off Howell to get into the um. To this round, obviously, Heartland's got a lot of Division I talent on that team. When you look at players like um, Lauren Solemn, Gracie Matson, and Amanda Roach. Um, you know, I've been very critical of Amanda Roach on this podcast for the last couple of weeks now. But, you know, when you look at Heartland, you know, a lot of experience on that team. A lot of senior-heavy experience. Um, obviously, um, you know, when you have that type of experience, and I know Heartland wants to get back at a team like Midland Dow really badly, especially because it was Midland Dow who knocked off the Eagles last year. Um, so that'll be interesting there. Um, I know Heartland's motivations there um, to at least try to get to back to, to try to get to Breslin. Um, and then you look at obviously um, Lakeland. Lakeland's basically playing with nothing to lose, playing with house money. Um, and then, the OA matchup, Lake Orion Clarkston. Um, I am curious to see how the Dragons will guard Maddie Sarusky. I am very curious. She had 38 against Waterford Kettering and 20 against Waterford Mott. But Waterford Ketter, but um, Clarkston in that district really wasn't tested. I mean, so, and Lake Orion's a much better team than both Waterford schools. That's not, that's not, not a doubt. Um, and then also, it sets up a really interesting matchup of the Battle of the Pride Girls. I mean, obviously, of course, Aaron Goodnow um, coaches at Pride. Jesse Heck is his assistant. Um, but then you have a lot of Pride Girls there. Obviously, you have um, you have Maddie Ebert, Kylie Heck, Chloe Wiegers, um, Ryan Palazziak, um, our Pride Girls, also on Clarkson. The majority of their team are pride girls. Obviously, when you look at um, when you look at um, you know, Maddie Sarovsky, Izzy Hadley, um, I mean, like obviously, there's gonna be a lot of pride representation in that matchup. Um, when you look at Lake Orion, obviously, this is a team that's went through a lot. They went through a lot, and. Especially in that district when you had to knock off two really good teams in Stony Creek and Rochester. That's going to give you some confidence. Lake Orion's going to be a team. They got to play loose. You know, they got to play loose. If they're tight, problems occur. Um, With Clarkson's case, obviously, you know that they got the experience. I mean, like, they, of course, winning three straight district titles. That tells you a lot right there. but Clarkson hasn't been able to get to the regional, past the regional semifinals. Or, you know, so when you look at the Wolves, obviously, now the Wolves have played some really good teams, obviously. Heartland, um, they've had to play um, Birmingham Marion last year. I mean, so when you really look at Clarkson, I mean, like, you know, 
they're going to, they're battle testing themselves. I mean, like, obviously, you got a senior heavy team. Obviously, with Sarovsky, you got Hadley. You got um, Kira Tomey, who's a very good softball player in her own right. I know Lake Orion's got their own very good softball player themselves. And um, Olivia Pavlovsky and also Taylor Dinda also play softball as well. So, a lot of multi sport athletes are in, are in this matchup as well. So, when you really look at it, so this is makes up in, in the coaching matchup is really good, too, between Aaron Goodnow and Bob Bridges. I mean, like, the, the coaching matchup is very good. I think this is going to be a very tight game. I think it's going to be a very close game between the Dragons and Wolves. I mean, like, you know, if um, if um, I think Lake Orion is starting to get there. I mean, like, Clarkston is right there. I mean, like, so I'll be curious to see. But from a regional perspective as a whole, um, Obviously, it's going to be really difficult um, for both the Dragons and the Wolves, um, whoever wins that game, to touch Heartland because Heartland's a team that they got size, they got their guard plays solid. Um, they've gotten they, I mean, like they they've been together. I mean, since elementary school. I mean, like so when you really look at this matchup here, I mean, like. Whoever plays Heartland is going to have is going to have things a little bit rough. I mean, like, but you know, I think both these teams, if they play well, you know, you know, against them in the regional final, um, I think you know they could give Heartland some, a scare. I really do. Um, so it's something to really keep a close eye on. I know a lot of people are saying, well, you're already you're already saying like, um. Heartland's his dominant force. I mean, like, yeah, they've proven it. But do I think that they could get upset? Absolutely. I mean, you really look at you really look at some of the teams. You look at Detroit Renaissance. You know, Detroit Renaissance, a lot of people look at them and said, you know, look at they're this dominant force, you know, and look what happened to them against Berkeley. I mean, and I think if you're I think Heartland's facing that same problem. I really do. I mean, I mean, Heartland's, but Heartland and Detroit Renaissance are two different teams, though. Detroit Renaissance this year was a little bit young, um, whereas with Heartland, they're senior heavy this year. Um, they got size. They got height. Um, so I'm curious to see if it's Lake Orion or Clarkson that matches up against Heartland in the regional final, um, how that will play out. So very curious to see how the three regionals are going to look like. I mean, obviously. Um, okay, now that's my take on girls basketball. Of course, um, I do want to go up the cheerleading a little bit before we talk boys. Um, congratulations to Rochester Adams. I mean, the Highlanders um, winning the state cheerleading title for the third straight year. Um, Stony Creek was second. Um, and then and then um, also, um, and then Rochester took fifth um, on Division One. So, Really well, Rochester representation in the state finals and cheerleading. Um, so the OA gets another state championship. Um, this time it's in competitive cheer. So very curious to see what happens going forward there. Um, heading into next year. Um, now let's go from back from cheerleading to um basketball, boys basketball. Obviously, districts start this week. I do have it, I do have the um district um previews on my blog. And I'm saying I'll be 4650 at blogspot.com if you want to look at the matchups. Um, the, the, champ, the league champions were crowned the other day, um, obviously. Um, you look at the Red Ferndale winning that league title. Um, North Farmington was second. Um, so when you really look at Ferndale, obviously now comes the test. I mean, like, because when you look at that district Ferndale has, um, they got to go through Detroit Country Day. That's not going to be an easy matchup for them. Um, and then obviously if they can get, if they can win that one, then they got to deal with, um, you know, especially going into um, down in the Wayne County. I mean, like, that'll be really interesting to see where um, Ferndale goes. I mean, like, and then of course, um, if they, I think Ferndale's got a great chance to get back to the Final Four, but they're gonna have to really earn it if they want to get back there. Um, obviously, when you have players like Trayvon Lewis and Justin Drake, you know that says a lot there um, for them. Um, North Farmington, obviously, I just don't see anybody really threatening in their district. They're at home. Um, 
Obviously, on the other side, you got Farmington, Southfield, Arts and Tech. Um, they should have no problem with Redford Thurston. Um, Livonia Stevenson's also in there. Um, so I just don't think there's going to be any problems over there in their district there. Um, the white, you know, was shared this year between Bloomfield Hills and Lake Orion. Um, Lake Orion, um, well, Bloomfield Hills won um, the um, Tuesday game over the Dragons, um, 52-50. Noah Adams just basically had to save him that game. Um, and that he did. Um, and then Lake Orion, they ended up getting, uh, and the Blue Bay ended up beating Stony Creek to um, clinch at least a share of the title. Lake Orion knocked off Groves um, behind Alden Ritz career night, 30 points. Um, so, you know, when you look at it, the white was shared between the um, Blackhawks and the Dragons um, this season. The um, blue title... Um, went to Rochester. I mean, obviously, Nick Ebola in his first year there. Um, what he's done over there has been remarkable. They do have a lot of experience, obviously, of course, led by Matt Stone. Um, so when you really look at Ferndale, I mean, when you really look at um, Rochester, when I look at their district, I mean, like, obviously, the Romeo district, we talked to, at length last week about it. Um, Rochester, you know, they got to play Stony Creek first, and then if they can win that, then they got to clash with Rochester Adams. I mean, like, so when you really look at Stony Creek, I mean, when you look at Rochester, I think Rochester, if they can, you know, if they can keep what they've been playing, I think they can give Adams a scare in that one. I mean, like, I know that um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there in that matchup. So we'll just see what happens there, I mean, between those two teams. But Rochester... Holding the blue title, um, you know, I mean, like, that is a really heck of an accomplishment there. Um, and then in the gold, I mean, Royal Oak. Um, I mean, Royal Oak won the gold title based on um, beating Harper Woods, who um, finished with the same identical league record, but they beat Harper Woods twice. Um, Royal Oak under Coach Aaron Smith. I mean, like, this has been a program that I've been really – really down in the dumps for a couple of years now. I mean, but Aaron Smith has done a fantastic job turning the program around. Um, Jesse Hosington's been a very good player for them. Cameron Caden is going to be a, Caden's going to be a player to watch. I really like this guy's game. I mean, I think that, um, you know, he's been really been playing real well for Royal Oak. Um, from a postseason perspective for Royal Oak, I mean, like you got to play Detroit Renaissance first. Um, the good news for them for Royal Oak is it's at home. Um, but the bad news is you're playing Detroit Renaissance. I mean, but, you know, you never know. I mean, upsets do happen. It's March Madness. Because if Royal Oak has a chance in this game, they're going to have to play with house money. They're going to have to play with, they're going to have to take care of the ball, force the Phoenix into turnovers. If they can do that, I can see an upset brewing. I mean, but that district over there is really, really difficult. When you really look at um, UOD Jesuits in there, you got Oak Parks in there, you got Berkeley's in there. I mean, you got Detroit Mumpers in there. I mean, like, it is a very, very difficult district, you know, to really look at. I mean, like, it's not to say, you know, when you look at the white, you know, with Bloomfield Hills, I mean, obviously that district over there at West Bloomfield, that's the kiss of that district. When you look at um, Bloomfield Hills, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, and um, and um, Birmingham and Brother Rice, I mean, that's also not counting Groves out either. So when you really look at that district, I mean, like, you know, that's going to be very interesting there. And then Lake Orion, obviously, in a district with um, with um. All three Rochester's, Romeo, Nidica, Eisenhower. Um, the Dragons will be seeing either Romeo or Eisenhower in the next round. Um, and then in the blue, obviously, Oxford, you know, they're going to have to go to Grand Blank, obviously. They got to put Kersley first. Should win that game. Um, and then likely seeing Davison in the next round. I mean, Oxford's got a shot to get the district final. So that's something to really look at there. Um, they got a shot. Uh, but back to Royal Oak, I think for Royal Oak, um, win the gold title, that's a big, big deal, um, you know, for the Ravens. I mean, like, it's been a long while since they've won a division title. Um, I mean, like, and I give credit to the kids for believing in Coach Smith. Um, 
and Coach Smith for believing in the kids, um, knowing that they can turn this around. And it looks like they've done that. Um, the postseason road is a little difficult going forward. I think that's a very difficult matchup for them in districts. But it's something to really, really keep an eye on as we move forward. I mean, like, obviously, um, as we head into the boys, um, so congratulations to all the um, league champions this season in the OAA. Um, obviously, other districts to keep a close eye on over at East Point. You got Harper Woods in there. Um, they will be taking on East Point. That winner will be taking on Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy. Um, obviously, we broke down the Inferno district um, with Inferno U taking on um, Inferno U taking on J- Detroit Union Rose Academy. That winner's taking on um, Birmingham Detroit Country Day, and Ferndale is taking on um, my goodness, I gotta really remember my matchup. So, um. We'll see what happens there. Um, and then also, um, also we got the North Fonson District. We broke that one down. The Kiss of Death District over at West Bloomfield with um, Grove, Seaholm um, taking on each other. That one is taking on Birmingham Brother Rice. Well, on the other side, you have um, West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills. That one is taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, broke down the Romeo District. The district that I think will be interesting is over at Waterford Mott. Obviously, you got Waterford Mott. Clarkston, Waterford Kettering, Avondale, and Pontiac. Um, Waterford Mott has the top seed in that district, and they have home court. But then there's a team named Clarkston in there. I mean, I've heard some pe- so many people that, you know, Waterford Mott, this is the year for Waterford Mott to be Clarkston. This is the year. Do I think that's going to happen? Because it's pretty simple. Once Keegan Wasilla comes back from injury, and he's going to be back in the district, Clarkson's going to start rolling. You have Nathan Steinman. You have Zach Austin. I mean, they've had Wyatt Riley has really broke has really broke out with Wasilla's injury. He's really played good basketball. I mean, you look at you got you got um Brody Co- you got Brody Cozen you got um you got um. Kavanaugh, Dighton. I mean, like, Clarkson's, Clarkson's Clarkson. You know, Clarkson's Clarkson. So, until the jury's out with them, until anything proves me otherwise, you're not touching Clarkson. I don't think Waterford Mott matches up well with Clarkson. I think Clarkson's played a tougher schedule than Waterford Mott. So, we'll see what happens there in that one. We mentioned the act of the um, Davidson district. Um, Grand Blank is the favorite there. Um, I think Oxford's got a shot to get to the district final. But it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. I mean, like, do I think they match up with the Bobcats? Probably not. But you never know. Upsets do happen. Upsets happen in this league. They do. The bottom line is this. You know, it's going to be really interesting with the boys' districts this week. I expect it's going to be fun. It's going to be some fun basketball. Before I sign off here, um, we'll see what happens going forward here. Of course, um, you know, we are wishing, I mean, like, um, we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. I wish everybody the best of luck in their um, basketball districts for the boys this week. Girls regionals is this week. Um, so, um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, like, we'll see if, um, with everything going on, obviously, of course, um, make sure everybody's good, everybody stay safe, stay healthy, um, take care, everybody, and we will see you all next week, everybody, um, take care, and God bless everybody, and see you all next week, see you soon, man. peace to you, Nation, God bless all.